1-800-RUNAWAY. 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 National Runaway Switchboard serves youth that are at risk, either at home or on, on the streets, and that's everyone across the entire country. Okay, I can look for a shelter in Pittsburgh, or if you give me any cities around there, in case nothing there works, we can do that too. NRS's mission is to help keep runaways and at-risk youth safe. It's our primary concern, our primary goal. And youth who have run away um, are dealing with the basics, survival, you know, shelter, food. Do you think your friend will be able to provide for you? Keeping themselves ready to keep going. It would be more important, say, for a youth to call us about the fact that they're being bullied by their big brother now than to call two years from now and having been bruised and battered and have been living on the streets for the last six months. National Runaway Switchboard. We're here to listen. That's our biggest thing. Oh, really? Um, well, what's going on? I've had calls from youth that have been on the streets, and I've had calls from youth that have been at home and just didn't know what to do. We're here to listen no matter what your problem is. It doesn't matter if you think it's serious, if you think it's silly. Our purpose is really for the youth and trying to make them feel comfortable. We are here to help you meet whatever goals you need that you can work with and you can live with. And so we are here for you. What type of problems are youth facing nowadays? I would say they're the same problems, you know, faced when I was a youth, you know, family problems. You know, you might not get along well with your, with your sister, your brother, your mom, or your dad. Um, also, you have your peer pressures from school. You have, unfortunately, physical abuse, emotional abuse. Drugs, gangs, self-esteem issues sometimes are at the very base of anything else that comes out. What's really nice about NRS is we sort of deal with the entire gamut of problems. It's not just uh, runaway youth, or it's not just abused youth. It's whatever your problem is, we're here to deal with it. And don't feel afraid to tell us, because we're, that's what we're here for. A liner is someone who answers phone calls that come in to the National Runaway Switchboard. National Runaway Switchboard? whether it be a parent or right. a kid that's in crisis, we're the first person that you talk to when you call. We try to assist the caller in any way possible. A lot of times, though, we just provide an ear for the caller, so basically Talking somebody the that the caller can vent their feelings to. So, I mean, I mean, I think it's really cool that you ended up calling here, because I understand it's very easy to get overwhelmed. I wanted to be a liner specifically for the runaway switchboard because it's nobility of purpose and it's ability to let you interact with somebody who's already started their own process of making a situation better. It's very important for people to know that there's somebody that they can call. Um, we get calls on all kinds of issues, um, issues of depression, of suicide. They can call about peer pressure. They can call about the person who approached them to do drugs at school. They can call about the fact that um, a friend of theirs is going through an abusive situation and they don't know what to do about it. That can be a, an extremely important first line of intervention where they call a person who is understanding and open and gives them room to talk about whatever their issues are. And if it doesn't go well, you'll go to your friend's house? Okay. When I first started with 1-800-RUNAWAY, I, I sort of saw it as a really large community and it's very, very inclusive. The kind of calls we get sort of reflects the kind of people we have at the switchboard in the call center. The diversity we have with our liners is the diversity we have with our callers. We're here all the time. Our doors never close, you know. We're 24 hours. We're confidential. We have had extensive training and a database with a large number of resources that could help you. The true point is to establish a connection and figure out what's going on and try to figure out why you felt the need to call us. We have a message relay service where we can take a message from you 
and we can deliver it to your parent or parent of your choice. So what message would you like to leave for your parents? You can tell them you know, that you're safe or that you don't want to come home because but this is the reason. It's a way to start communicating with your parents at the very least. If you're not ready to talk with them directly, you can at least leave a message with us. Okay, so let me make sure I have that right. Mom, Dad, I'm sorry I left home, but I really need to be with Brian right now. Maybe we can talk about it soon, but at a later time. And then another person at our organization, one of our other liners, will call and deliver the message to the parent that you want it to go to. And then if they want, they can leave another message for you and you can call in and pick up that message. And it starts the lines of communication going. So what you told me from what I've written down is Maria, please come home. We love you and we miss you. We just want you home. The message service has that two-fold meaning and two-fold service, both confidentiality, um, which is the backbone, and then opening the lines of communication, which really allows for the reconciliation that we would hope occur. The Home Free Program is a program that's in partnership with Greyhound. And basically, NRS is able to get youth back home or into a transitional living situation if they're unable to get back home. The goal is to join the family and to get the child back, but then to also see that that is somehow different and uh, a situation where the youth wouldn't be running away again. They've seen the streets and they realize it's not what they thought it was going to be or have been put in situations which are dangerous or otherwise very uncomfortable for them. You have options, you have the whole world at your fingertips and you can do anything you want. And an at-risk youth usually never heard that. And, and that is the most empowering thing you can tell a youth, that you, there's nothing stopping you from anything. And we are here to help. First and foremost, we care. We're not here to judge. Each and every call that the National Runaway Switchboard receives enlightens us as to what's going on in the world of youth. National Runaway Switchboard. I'm here. We're all here. Our job is to take your call. And if you don't feel like calling right now because you're a little nervous or you're a little scared or you're a little freaked out, just you're not ready to talk about it, we'll be here at 2 o'clock in the morning. If you want to call tomorrow morning on your way to school, we'll be here at 7 o'clock in the morning. And we want to listen and we want to talk to you and we want National to help you. Having run away and spent some time in a dire situation on the streets or in fear living on the streets or hungry and without shelter and without a home has really made a lot of difference for me in the way that I feel like I can handle a call. It isn't just for kids who are runaways. That's a big part of who we help but we also help people who feel like they might be on the verge of running away. We're here for you too. I talked to um, a 16-year-old male and he had gotten into a fight with his mom over grades uh, in high school. So he took off after their big fight and he was actually underneath a bridge um, by, their, by their home. And when I asked him why he called, he said he just, he literally put in 1-800 and spelled out runaway in his keypad. Um, so for about an hour, we talked about what was going on at home, how things could maybe be better, um, and just how he could be happy at home while meeting kind of these, what felt like demands to him from his parents. One that stayed with me the most was um, a transgender woman. She was the most beautiful soul. Like I could tell through the phone that she just, had so much to give to the world. Like she, I honestly, I mean, I feel like I'm tearing up right now, like thinking about it, but she was just having such a hard time um, just coming into herself. She had just um, really finished her process of trans, uh, transferring from a man to a woman, and she just needed some help on moving forth in life because although her family was 
helping her. They weren't really supportive of her choices. And so like when I helped her, when I finished shoot, like I literally felt like I was talking to my best friend even though I just like picked up the phone like 30 minutes before then. I actually just took a call very recently from an 11 year old. And it was, I think that one will stick with me for a while because of how young he was and that there are so few resources for somebody at that age. And the fact that he had been in seven foster homes in the last six years. And I just felt so frustrated for him and I wanted to be able to do something more for him. And he sounded defeated at such a young age. I had a little uh, teenage girl call me once who wanted to run away from home. And she had been molested by several male members of her family and told her mother about the situation and her mother wouldn't believe her. And it was very, it was very intense, you can imagine. And we talked about the pros and cons and what, what is she running away from and what, do you think that the steps you're taking will end the situation for you, would be a better situation for you? Um, we came to the conclusion that she needed to go to a shelter because even when they called the authorities, they called the police and called uh, Child and Family Services, she wasn't being listened to. So we found her a shelter, and this, that, this is the difficult part of this volunteering, is that you just take them to a step. I got her to a shelter, and that was really important to me to know that, first of all, no adult was listening to her, and now she was heard, she, I, had, I gave her her options, she made her decisions, and hopefully she's safe today. That's all I can hope for. You know, there was one system, 17-year-old girl who um, was living with her mother in a very abusive home. Um, and she had called uh, the DCFS in her area to come out, and her mother was very manipulative and knew how to manage it, and so she just kind of dealt with it. Um, and she talked a lot about her abuse, but what I found so interesting about her, because I have a daughter at the time about the same age, was how she really knew what she wanted. And I was so impressed by that. I think she just needed someone to hear her story that wasn't going to be judgmental, and I always wondered what happened to her. Um, I t actually just took a call this week, um, a 13-year-old girl who had just told her parents that she was pregnant. Her parents didn't react very well to the situation and she decided to run away from home. After being away for a few days, she wanted to let her parents know that she was safe, but at the same time she wasn't ready to go home yet either, and so we provided a number of different resources, um, including letting her know about the uh, National Runaway Safe Lines message service so that she could leave a message for her parents, letting her know that she was safe. Um, as well as a shelter resource and um, a referral to uh, Planned Parenthood. What was most shocking to me were the sheer numbers. Uh, between 1.6 and 2.8 million youth on the street at any given time. I was shocked to hear how young some of the kids are that are running away. Before I started volunteering, I always thought that um, being homeless or being a runaway is a choice. But after some of the stories and the calls that we take, it's really not a choice. Sometimes you just have to get away from a bad situation. The mis misconception that feels easiest to be led astray by is that that these are just bad kids, that they just take off for no reason, and if they would just go home and listen to their parents, um, everything would be okay. Kids who run away from home are just being defiant. You know, they're just not willing to listen to their parents, or their parents aren't letting them get what they want. Oh, they're just running away because they're bad kids. They just don't want to be at home. They're rebelling against their parents. That runaway youth were troublemakers that kind of put themselves in the situation that they found themselves in. I think most people assume homeless people are on drugs or are criminals or are you know, emotionally unbalanced or whatever. When you add a youth component to that stereotype, then they think, oh, well, they're gang members or they're somehow violent or whatever when they see a young person who's, who's on the street or maybe they're in prostitution. So there's a layers and layers of stereotypes that people assume about homeless youth. Uh, the reality of the situation is that a lot of youth run away from home because they're being physically abused. They're in unsafe situations. Um, or they're looking for another outlet to feel heard. If there's things going on at home that they can't even handle because things are dangerous for them there, it's not safe for them. The more of these stories that you listen to, the more apparent it becomes that 
You know, sometimes kids just don't feel they have any other option but to leave home, and in fact, often don't have any other option. What comes true when you're on the phone with some of these people is they're not leaving for fun. Most of them, you know, there is a streak of independence that I want to leave home because I'm you know, 17 and have all the answers. I mean, that happens, but the, the reality is, is that they've been scared and now they have knowledge and now they know the pluses and minuses of being home a little bit more clear and they're ready to come home. You get a sense of the more, more than the stereotype that these are people that just want to feel support and secure. Thank you.